all up to you now. Okay. I have y'all seen the oath on the screen. I'll, I'll go through it um, <clears throat> real slowly, and I'll interrupt at certain words. And you, uh, I'll ask you to raise your right hand, uh, put your left hand on the Bible, and repeat that. You do not have to say your name, but just repeat after me. I do solemnly swear. I do solemnly swear that I am duly qualified. And I am duly qualified according to the Constitution of this state. According, according to the Constitution of this state to exercise the duties. To exercise the duties of the office to which I have been elected. To the office of which I have been elected. And that I will, and that I will, to the best of my ability, to the best of my ability, discharge those duties. Discharge those duties. And preserve, and preserve, protect, protect, and defend, and defend the constitution of this state, the constitution of this state, and of the United States, and of the United States, and the ordinances of this county. And the order this is a discount. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay, we'll leave it. Yeah.
<laughs> good evening, everyone. Well, that was weak. Good evening, everyone, and Happy New Year. <laughs> I like to call the Suffolk County Council regular meeting for Tuesday, January 10th, to order. Let us all stand, please. Let's be with you, please. Call us an invitation, invocation. And please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. Let us pray. Our dear kind Heavenly Father, we do thank you for bringing us through the holiday season and bringing us to the first meeting of this year. Thank you for all of your mercies and your grace that kept us to see another year. We thank you for allowing us to come to the table to serve you again. We thank you for those new, well, re-elected officials who have taken the oath yet another time to serve you in the way that you have appointed and anointed them to serve. Help all of us to serve in a way that you have set the examples for us to be servant leaders and to always be the stewards of what you have blessed us with and to never forget the least of those, the people that we are serving. And as we begin our meeting, we ask that you help us to look at every item with concern and help us to have wisdom and clarity of mind. We ask you to also bless all of the people from our community who came to our meeting, those who saw fit to come and witness the swearing in, and those who are always here to support us. Help us to be a shining example that they will be able to praise you for the work that you're do doing through us. And as we finish this meeting this evening, help all of us to get home safely to our families. These are our blessings we thank and ask in the precious name of your Son and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Tonight we'll be led in the Pledge of Allegiance by retired U.S. Marine Douglas C. Levere, who served our country from August 1963 to August 1990. 
He is a Vietnam and Gulf War service veteran with over 30 years of honorable service. He currently lives in County Council District 5. Thank you for your service, Sergeant. Thank you. You make it sound a lot better than what I lived through. But. <laughs> Everybody face the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You still fit that uniform, do you? You know why? I have to let a few buttons down. <laughs> <laughs> Is requested 1700 Pew Tortured Road uh, to rezone approximately 0.22 acres of a larger, uh, almost one acre tract of property from agriculture conservation to general commercial. This is the property in question. It's at the corner of uh, Glen Street and Pew Tortured Road. Uh, it is actually split zoned the commercial corridors back in 1999. They did a buffer on both sides of the road, which left some lots with only portions of the property zoned in one district and then split into another. The applicants are actually asking to bring this entire lot into the general commercial district. It's a little close up view of the property. It has some pretty significant landscape uh, tree buffers on both the northeast and northwest property boundaries. Uh, this request is really coming out of a desire for the applicants to uh, do a commercial project on this property. It would be a, a garden center landscape nursery. Um, the intent is to bring it into the general commercial district just to unify the development standards and so that they're dealing with one set of rules instead of two. And this is how the property looks today and has for quite some time. It is in the military protection planning area. The MPA is supportive of rezoning properties from the agricultural zoning district to commercial designations that remove the possibility for manufactured housing. So we do find that this request is generally consistent with the comprehensive plan. 
Planning Commission did recommend approval of this request. Although there is adjacent agricultural property to the west, and it's part of a residential development, this pre-Torture Road frontage really is commercial, and it historically has been developed that way. It is, in general, one with a comprehensive plan, and bringing the property into one's own district is part of a best practice in the planning profession. Happy to answer any questions you may have. Ms. Taylor, is this District 1 or District 2? I don't remember off the top of my head. Let me see the map again. I was trying to look at it. It's right across the street from... You mean off the plan mark, Mobile Carolina? Yeah, Carolina Mobile Park. Oh, okay, yeah. I'll make a motion to approve for a second. I have a couple of questions. Was there any community opposition? The public hearing will be at the next meeting, so the public notices actually went out last Friday. I had one phone call from a property owner. He was just curious. I explained to him what it was, and he said, oh, well, then I'm not going to come. That's the only thing I've heard so far. You haven't gotten any negative phone calls? No, I really haven't. Okay, Mr. Chairman. We have a motion and a second for first reading. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, say aye. Ordinance number 22983. Mr. Bryant, and prior to holding second reading, we will have a public hearing. Mr. Chairman and counsel, Ordinance 22983 is ordered to approve the sale of property located at 20522 North Magnolia Street. That's the old mental health center. And the plan is to sell this property to CMC Property Holdings, LLC, principal of which is Kevin Conley, who has built some other low to moderate income apartments around the city of Sumter and operates those. The consideration is not more than $1,000, but there will be an investment of $14.5 million for 50 low to moderate income apartments. This will increase the tax base for the city and the county. We've got to take any questions prior to public hearing. I now declare the public hearing open. Anyone wishing to speak for or against Ordinance number 22983, please proceed to the podium. State your name for the record. Seeing none, the public hearing is now closed. I move for a second. It's been moved and properly seconded that we have second reading on Ordinance number 22983 and discussion. Any and all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed, say aye. Ordinance number 22984, Mr. Bryant. And prior to second reading, we'll again have another public hearing on this ordinance as well. Mr. Chairman, members of the council, we've been approached by Adams Property Group, LLC, with an offer to purchase the Spectrum, which is up on Pinewood Road, about 5,000 acres for $327,600. You have a tax certificate contract. It's still being negotiated, but you have the contract attached as the most salient points, which is the price and the property to be sold. We'd like to take any questions prior to public hearing. There is a historical marker outside of that fence, I believe, Mr. Mixon, designating something about colored schools. Is that going to stay in place? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Paragraph 5.1G on paragraph 5 says the monument must be preserved. It's attached to the ordinance. You can read it. Do you have the appraised value? We've not had it appraised. We had a rough appraisal done by one of the deputy assessors. The price is good. Okay, Mr. Bryant. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Now to clear the public hearing portion of this reading, open anyone wishing to speak for or against ordinance number 22984. Please proceed to the podium. State your name for the record. Seeing none, public hearing is now closed. 
We'll move to properly seconded that we have second reading on ordinance number 22984. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed. Third reading, ordinance number 22982. Mr. Chairman, Council, good evening. Uh, ordinance 22982 is a third reading request for a budget amendment uh, from to utilize $700,000 from our reserve fund for the uh, renovations of the Magnolia building. Uh, there's no changes to second reading. Move for approval. Second. We're moving to properly second that we have third reading on ordinance number 22982. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. Aye. All opposed. Ordinance number 22982 is passed. Coming out to committee reports. Report from council members on other meetings, trainings, and our conferences. Mr. Mr. Washington. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to cover a couple areas. Uh, last Tuesday night, I hosted and facilitated a meeting with about 100 residents that's the, at the Raffin Creek Community Center. In attendance was Senator Thomas McElveen, Representative Will Wheeler, and Representative Bob Petalino, and representatives from the Department of Transportation. <coughs> the reason for the meeting is because a lot of the complaints that I have gotten about roads in my district, District 1, which spans from Rimmer uh, down to Pinewood, are state roads and not county roads. As it turns out, there are 137 state roads in District 1. Lots of roads that we travel on and are familiar with, uh, just to sort of give you a frame of reference, we're talking about roads like 261, 521, Wedgeville Road, Cherryvale Drive, DeChamps Road, Dinkins Mill, Baker Horatio, just the number of roads where people are experiencing problems. And the problems that they are experiencing involve road conditions, uh, trash and litter, uh, tree hangovers as a result of uprooting from storms and trees kind of hanging over the roads, some trees in the ditches. In fact, there was an instance over by Rapid Creek <coughs> Baptist Church where the roads hadn't been ditched and all of the trash came downhill, so there's a big blob of trash in front of the church. Now, these are state roads. Um, and so we thought it was important to ask the folks who supervise and have jurisdiction over state roads to be there. And they were there, of course. The meeting went from about six to eight. We ended up discussing three roads, but folks wanted the opportunity to expand the conversation for their areas. And so we will be scheduling four more meetings um, over the quadrants of District 1, one in Pinewood, uh, one in Wedgefield, one in, um, at Catch All, and then one up at Pisco Crossroads so that um, residents can express the difficulty they're having with these roads, with these issues. Now, we have some of the same issues with county roads. <laughs> My plan is to duplicate that same process once we go through the state roads. Our roads are in horrible condition, and we have to figure out a way to address this issue doing something other than just saying no. And so I think Senator Mappleby is committed uh, to trying uh, to address this issue through DOT with the state roads, and I think we should mirror what he is doing um, with the county roads. It's kind of hard um, to ask residents to support a lot of the things that we do if their road systems are not passable. 
which sort of uh, leads me to the next issue that has been raised with me, which are private roads. Now, let me just start by saying that private roads are more of a rural issue than they are um, a city issue. Um, but Mr. Chairman, some of the private roads uh, in my district, there are some in Councilman Byrd's district, there are some in Councilman Baker's district, and Council Lady McGain's district. These roads have many people that live on them, some 20 to 30 to 40 people. And some of these roads are so impassable that families have had to create other roads through other people's property just to access their homes. Let's think about that for a second. If, they're, if they have to do that, it is then impossible for emergency services, law enforcement, to get to them in case of emergency. And we have to do better than that. There is a solution and we just have to put our heads together. What I'd like to do is to request that this is on the agenda for the next council meeting so we can begin to have discussions about how to address this issue. We have to do more than say, no, these folks are paying taxes just like everyone else and they need to be able to have access to their property, even if it requires some sort of commitment from them we have to help these residents. The last thing, and I'll close on this, is that one of the other themes from the meeting last Tuesday night at the community center was litter. And what was communicated is that there has been a lot of conversation about addressing litter. We have a litter committee. Um, I wrote a litter plan, but the litter problem is not moving. And two things need to be done. The litter has to be cleaned up, and then enforcement has to happen. So the other issue I want us to talk about as a body, and this is a request to put it on the agenda, is how we deal with the litter issues because it is not getting better. That is my request. Mr. Washington, we talked about this. Would you be agreeable to some of the committees that wouldn't have maybe uh, the new litter officer come in and explain what he's going on, what's he doing, and get a, a big from public work or something? Would, you, would, would that be okay for you to send both of the committees? I guess the public works committee, I believe, is that correct? Or whatever committee it is. I would be agreeable to that with the caveat that subsequent to that meeting, I'd like for the litter officer to come before council and explain the same thing so people in the public will know that we are addressing okay, this. Okay, that's issue. fine. But like so you said, what Ruth's dirty, I give you one example. On uh, April last year, Queen Power Brewery, I can't remember what it was. It's just a bad day, then. I don't, I don't have the answer to these. Enforcement. Oh, yeah, and that, that's a. I know Cameras. I know they arrested one lady recently. I heard about that. I'd like to know how many have been arrested. We got to do better. Jeez, oh, I agree. That's the problem. All right. Well, thank you. Got to get, if we can get those, but I, I am amenable to using the committee process. Thank you. That's fine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for the time. Thank you, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman. Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, I'm glad uh, I listened to Councilman Washington because what he was saying about roads have a lot to do with what I've been hearing in this county. And I'd like to make this statement and I'd like to have it a part of the minutes. <clears throat> For the past seven years, Sumter County Council have elected public education in Sumter County. Council members often state that education is the foundation of economic development. However, from 2016 to 2022, County Council only invested $375,000 in public education. County Council denied the Sumter School District over $5 million in funds that the South Carolina Department of Revenue said the school district was entitled to by law 
on the South Carolina Act 388. Four members of Sumter County Council have demonstrated by their consistent votes that they have very little concern, if any, for improving the quality of education for children of low-income families who are attending public school. Also, the same members show little concern about the low salaries, near poverty level, of essential employees, food service workers, bus drivers, maintenance, and custodians that are needed to ensure the efficient operation of the School District. To understand the urgency to improve quality of education in public schools and to need to uh, and need to receive all entitled funds, we must be aware of and willingly accept certain facts about education in the United States, South Carolina, and Sumter County. First, of the 10 states with the worst public school system in 2021, South Carolina was ranked third. Also, South Carolina ranked 48 in the quality of education and 38 in the percent of people with high school or college degrees. Second, South Carolina is the ninth poorest state in the United States. South Carolina ranks fourth in poverty rate at 16.6%. The national average is 14.6%. The poverty rate in Sumter County is 20.5%. The Sumter County rate is 5.9% higher than the national average and 3.9% higher than the South Carolina rate. Poverty in Sumter County, 20.5%, is a very serious problem. Poverty is about not having enough money to meet basic needs, including food, clothing, and shelter. However, poverty is more, much more than just not having enough money. The World Bank Organization describes poverty in this way. Poverty is hunger. The Sumter County School District depends on loyal and dedicated food service workers to faithfully report to work in the early morning hour. They are tasked to prepare healthy meals to feed all Title I students so that they can eat and concentrate on their classroom assignments. Although these workers are being paid hourly wages, four council members still voted to deny them a pay increase that they have not received in two years. Sumter School District ranked 64 out of 81 school districts in South Carolina. If the district is to move from the bottom 25% to the top 25% in order to prepare the workforce needed to attract high paying business and industry, Sumter County Council and the Sumter County Legislative Delegation must change their attitude about educating children from poor low-income families. They must realize that the mission of public school is to develop a productive workforce with the skills and knowledge to improve and sustain economic development. In November 2022, Sumter County Council asked the citizens to vote for a referendum to continue the one-cent capital penny sales tax. The elected officials and community leaders in Sumter County knew this was a sure winner. However, they were in shock when the citizens rejected the tax by less than 500 votes. County council members want to justify this defeat by saying it was due to poor advertising. In November 2024, county council will have another opportunity to submit another one cent sales tax for citizens approved. Now is the time for the four members on county council to stop disrespecting public education, low income school district employees, and Title I students in public school. They must realize that Sumter County had a 20.5% poverty rate. Over 22,000 citizens live in poverty. County council cannot expect low-income people 
to voluntarily put a tax on themselves when for seven years county council refused to pass the millage approved to improve their quality of life and the quality of education of their children. This past midterm election showed low-income people have the power of their vote. They realize that the vote is their voice. Their message is loud and clear. No school millage, no penny tax. In short, no millage, no tax. The insanity of county council has lost over $107 million in capital projects for refusing to give some school districts $5 million of the entitled money that they have received. Mr. Chairman, this is a disgrace. And if we want to continue and improve this county with the penny sales tax that has been a great benefit to this county and able to make improvements to attract high paying business and industry like Continental Tower, then we need to support public education which is the backbone of economic development in this county. Thank you. Anyone else? We want to do reports, Ms. Blandy. Council members who need to please contact me concerning um, counties connect and the legislative day. Also, there will be um, institute classes being held during that same time. So let me know if you plan to take any more courses. And then Rules Summit will be held um, March the 6th. And any council members interested in that, please let me know. The Public Works Department monthly report is in your packet, as well as the Sheriff's uh, monthly report. And lastly, um, those that plan to attend the Chamber Retreat, please give me a I'll call tomorrow. Thank you. Mr. Administrator, County Administrator, report. Mr. Chair, Council, good evening again. Uh, first, I'd like to remind Council that at the next meeting on uh, January the 24th, we will have our external independent audit firm come and report the annual report for the last fiscal year. Uh, that information has already been shared with the state, so they're prepared now to present before Council. Uh, the second item, I uh, did want to mention a uh, follow-up on some of the remarks this evening. We look forward to the opportunity to bring uh, Ms. McCoy, our litter officer, uh, who's fairly new, but has done great things over the last couple of weeks. Um, as Ms. Bird mentioned, uh, I believe our first case of someone actually being incarcerated because of litter. Uh, there are a number of other violations and fees and fines that, and community service work that have been issued, but that my knowledge is the first to actually have the um, incarcerated. So I'm um, happy to get him up here and explain uh, an opportunity to share with him a little bit of his experience and an opportunity to also share what's going on in the county. Uh, we do know that there's a meeting um, next Tuesday, I believe it's the 17th, uh, with a large group, um, a partnership with the city, the county, the uh, Litter Advisory Board, and others to plan a major event. I believe it's going to either be the latter part of February or 1st of March, but that uh, those activities are being planned and scheduled um, starting next Tuesday. I know there's a formal meeting about that. Um, and uh, last, uh, the capital penny sales tax. I know that was discussed tonight. I believe there will be some opportunity over the next, at least certainly within the next couple of months, to start developing a strong strategy which I believe will engage and involve council members as well as other community leaders early on in the process uh, to, to develop a good strategy for the next 2024. Um, I've been informed that the chamber retreat, which many of you are participating in, uh, also plans on discussing uh, some options and uh, community input with the capital penny sales tax. So things are afoot and moving. Uh, just remind council that uh, the schedule of time would be obviously next November 2024 uh, would be the election. So back <coughs> off of that, we're looking at a good nine, 10 month process and maybe even moving it back a little further than that based on some of the conversations we'll have over the next few weeks. That's all I have, sir. Thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yes. 
Can you tell me the time and location for the Liberty on the 17th? Excuse me, I'm sorry. Mary, I'm sorry. Mary, you just informed me that we won't have any committees in place for the next meeting. Uh, so it will be like the, uh, the next meeting, or unless we call for a special meeting. The 17th, what time and where is that? Uh, it's out at Public Works, and I believe it's a 10 in the morning. I'll get that schedule out to you. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Coming on to the public comment portion of our agenda, citizens desire to speak to council, limited to no more than three minutes. Comments are to be made to the chairman. Uh, anyone wishing to address council, please proceed to the podium. And please state your name for the record. Public comment portion of our agenda is now. <clears throat> My name is Kimberly Landing. And I live on Bell Lane. It's one of those roads that we all heard about earlier, one of those private roads. Approximately 10 families live on that road. And it is. Bad. That's putting it mildly. It's bad. And when it rains, it's hard to enter and exit. There's only one way you have to pull over in the woods to try to get in and out. There's no drainage there. We have elderly and children there with health issues. And I've been battling this for some time. And I just would like for you all to consider this as far as private roads for taxpayers. So we can't understand why we're taxpayers we talk about paying tax. Well, you know, so many questions there. Why can't we get some assistance for these people? Emergency vehicles can't come in and access someone if they're killed. That's how bad the road is. So I just thought I would come to see if we can express my concerns for this. What's the name of the road again? Fellow Lane. How do you spell it? F-E-L-L-O-W. Mr. Chairman, if I may, it is off of 261 and Garner Road. Yeah, I have um, visited the road probably four times, and it is just as bad as Mr. Lanning has described. I've met with the residents out there. The Connecticut uh, County has some water lines out there as well, so they have to be really careful about what they may try to do to improve um, the area because they don't want to cut or interfere with something that's underground. And this is one of the things that I've been raising with folks that have an issue that there are our folks, there are some to rights, and, and, and we got to figure out a way to help them. Thank you, Mr. Manning. Anyone else wishing to address council? Mr. Watkins, I presume. Oh, thank you. Uh, good evening. Uh, Happy New Year's. Uh, I've been away for about six months, and it's good to be back. And it's good to be able to see um, government in action. And I think one of the reasons why we don't get as much um, participation from the public. It's a lack of civic concern. And I've always said that there's two type of rights that we have. One is civic and the other is civil rights. And I think the um, civic part of it is lacking. There was a uh, gentleman uh, who said power concedes nothing without a demand agitate, agitate, agitate. And uh, the governmental agencies and people who who supposed to represent us, or who do represent us, I'll say, actually many times don't know what's happening because no one brings it to their attention. The way the young lady just came up and brought it to the attention of the entire county council is what should be done on a regular basis. Even when it came down to the littering, uh, many people, they don't complain about the conditions. Um, there was a fire uh, at 
on Broad Street, Broad Street and, and Hospital Circle, in a historic uh, building, which was the first black hospital in South Carolina, um, that was vacant for quite some time. Um, it was a historic landmark which had never been designated. Um, the fire, for what I understand, was not that serious, but the attempt to uh, put the fire out was more devastating to the building than the fire. So as a result, this building probably is going to be demolished, which is another um, erasure issue, not ratio, but erase. Um, there's been quite a few movements about the racial of the culture of people. And I can see uh, in something, I mean, all of the hard work that was done in the civil rights movement, Cutray Drugstore, the other um, entities, there's no sign that there's been a movement in this, in, in, in something to um, level the playing field. Uh, I went to Louisville, Kentucky, and um, in Louisville, you go walk down the streets, you see signs up saying that this establishment, Mr. McCain mentioned a sign about the the property that is a black school. Um, I think the developers need to, uh, there should be stipulations that they put a sign back up there, or, or maybe a larger sign. Yes. And these places are, are that being uh, demolished. Um, I, and I brought it up to the city council because they were talking about having these tours and bringing in tourism. And my point was, and I'm sorry for taking um, the extra time, and my point, and I mentioned it to the director, when they have these tours, how many sites on that tour uh, bring light to the fact that like people was uh, in this community. I mean, after all, there would be no evidence that there were um, <coughs> a black culture in this, in, in something. And I mean that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Anyone else? Seeing none, public comment portion is closed. Move for Jones. We move to property seconds that we can learn all in favor, please say aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Yeah.